Hi, Tim here from Proclaim AV, and today we're going to talk about gates and compressors. Let's check it out. Now I'm not only going to show you an analog compressor and gate, but I'll also show you in the digital world because I think that will help you visualize how that works. And for some of you, the visual will really help the function stick in your head. Let's get started. So we're here in the digital realm in one of my digital mixers. So you can kind of see visually what a compressor does. Now, what does a compressor do? Let's start with that. Well, a compressor, it makes the loudest parts of your signal softer. That's the basic function of a compressor, okay? And so here, uh, there are a couple things we need to understand. So on this side, this is our input level for audio from minus 90 all the way up to plus 6 dB, okay? And then this part of here is the output level. 90 to minus six. There are meters here for the input level and for the output level and for the compression when it's going. And we'll show you that. All right. So here's how compressors work. You set a threshold and this is a level where, uh, you don't want that. It's where you want your compressor to start working on whatever sound source it is. So if it's your pastor, kind of a level where you want the compressor to start kicking in, uh, sometimes it's a louder level. So you want most of his signals to get through. You set it maybe a little higher. Okay. So we've set our threshold here. Let's set ours at 50 dB. That's not a prescription. That's just for demonstration purposes. So it's here at 50, right? And you'll notice that the line is a straight line, which means that um, because we haven't set a thresh or a ratio on this, and we'll talk about that in a minute, um, for every dB that comes in, 1 dB goes out. So if 10 dB comes in, then, or neg 10 dB comes in, then neg 10 dB is going out, as you can see on the line, okay? Now, compressors work on a ratio. Here, the ratio is at 1 to 1, all right? So 1 to 1 means that for every dB that comes in, a dB comes out. And then we just said that, right? So let's change that ratio. And let's say for every 3 dB that comes in, only 1 dB can come out. So let's do that. We'll crank it down here to three. Okay. All right. Now for every three dB that we go over the threshold minus 50, we're only going to get one. So if we send in 53 dB, we're only going to get out 51 dB. Make sense. Okay. And so that's what the compressor does. Now, there's a thing called a limiter. If we take the ratio on this and we crank it all the way over to infinity, now you can see that for every, um, for any dB that goes over 50, we'll only get 50 all the way across. That's a limiter. Now I don't really recommend limiters because as you can tell, they don't really sound as natural. It sounds like somebody's, you know, smashing the volume down or something. So but they can be handy for certain situations where you don't want something to break <laughs> by sending it too much signal. So here we're going to bring our ratio back up to three to one. All right. So our ratio is at three to one. And now we can see that we've got more input level right here. Inputs higher than output. Okay. And so there's a certain amount we just can't get over. Let's look here on the main. Hey, so, you know, we're keeping it around here and we're not spiking up really high. That's good. That's what we want our compressor to do. Okay. Now we can set our threshold even lower. And that means that the compressor is kicking in, you know, more aggressively. It starts sooner. Now let's look right over here. We'll bring it back up to 50. Uh, you can see that this downward uh, direction of the meter is the compressor. And that lets you know when the compressor is kicking in. That's the indicator that the compressor is kicking in. On an analog one, it's a little different, and we'll show you that in a minute. All right, so that's the ratio and the threshold 
for your compressor. Next, you have attack and release. And this, oh, what in the world is that? Well, it's actually pretty simple, okay? For every time your audio goes above your threshold, how soon, attack, do you want that compressor to start working? Here we're at 45 milliseconds. Let's move it up to 400 milliseconds. Now it's not kicking in as soon. Or we can put it at one. That means that at one millisecond after your signal exceeds the threshold, the compressor starts compressing. Okay, we'll put it back to 45 or whatever once. That's pretty good. And release is how soon after the signal drops back down below the threshold will the compressor come off or open the channel up. So if we do a really long release time, you can tell that at, on this meter right here, it takes it a while to get back open again. So if I'm loud and then I'm soft, it's still taking a window to get back up again. Now you can make your release really quick so that everything is back open right away. One millisecond, 10 milliseconds. But where they have it set there is pretty good. A lot of these, if they're in an automatic mode, if there's an automatic mode for the attack release, which a lot of analog ones have, that'll work just fine for voice. And so it's just easier to run it in auto and you don't have to worry about those settings. Then finally, there's makeup gain right here. And the reason for this is, if I put my threshold way down and I compress a lot, now my signal's starting to get too quiet and I want it to be louder in my mix so I can add some makeup gain in here and bring the overall level back up again after I've compressed uh, so things aren't too quiet. Okay, one more thing we're gonna talk about with compressors is that there's something called hard knee and soft knee. Right now we're in what's called hard knee compression, okay? And on hard knee, um, as soon as we hit this, boom, you know, but we gotta hit the threshold before we start compressing, and then I'll compress. But with soft knee, we'll click it here, you can see that it changes this into more less of a, a um, an angle, a more of a curve, where it starts kicking in a little earlier than the threshold, so that it sort of gives you a little more gradual compression. It's not so immediate. And soft knee is nice. You can be careful with it because sometimes, especially for voice, it can tend to sort of um, muddy things if it's used um, too much or, 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 you know, in certain voices, it's really bad. Some are fine, but for some voices, that compression just kicking in right away and you'd rather have it in hard knee, it might work better. You just tinker around and see what it sounds like. Different people's voices are very different, so. So there you go, hard knee and soft knee. Then we can bypass the compressor entirely. Most compressors have a bypass button, and that lets you turn the compression off entirely. Here you can see it's all grayed out. So, I mean, we can't do anything. We can, we can adjust the things or whatever, but because it's gray, it's actually not working until we take it out of bypass mode. Okay, so we're looking at the front of this DBX hardware compressor, and you can see that there is a ratio, or sorry, a threshold knob here. So let's turn our threshold up, and then when we turn our threshold up and we begin to exceed the threshold, you can see that happen. This the red light comes on here on that indicator. So we're when we're quiet enough, we're in the green, but when we exceed the threshold, so let's back it down a little bit. So if I'm here and just surfing along, and all of a sudden I get too loud then you can see that it's kicking in there, all right? So, there we go. We're gonna set it a little hot because it's for demonstration purposes, all right? Next is the over easy button. Now that's kind of the same thing as the soft knee. So when we engage that, then you'll see there's some orange light coming on here in that indicator. And that lets you know that it's starting to compress just a little early and that's the soft knee that's engaged, all right? Now we have our ratio here set for two to one. So the same thing as with the digital, we can set the ratio from everything all the way up to infinity. Um, and then we can make it basically where it just comes through. Now you notice as you set the ratio on this one, there's a gain reduction meter that will light up showing you how much gain reduction is happening based on 
um, your settings. So when, the, of course, the ratio is zero, you're not getting any reduction at all. Now there's an attack and release here, and that's the same thing where we can set how fast or slow and, uh, the attack and release happen. I have it in auto, uh, but you can take it out of auto, and then that will let you manually set attack and release mode uh, uh, times depending on what you're using your compressor for. For voice, I think auto works pretty nicely. And then right here is the makeup gain. So makeup gain lets you add gain back in if compression has brought your volume down, again, too much through the compression process. And then we have a bypass button where now we don't have any compression going on. Now your meters will still show things are happening, but no compression is actually happening, okay? So very similar type of controls to the digital, but you just won't see that sort of graphic representation of what's happening. But you will know what's happening based on your understanding of that, okay? Now, uh, this is also, this is a stereo compressor here. And so there's a stereo couple button. If we hit that, then both sides of the compressor will start doing the same thing. And um, let me sort of zoom out here a little bit for you. So there are two sides to this compressor. And you can see that when I go here, you know, stereo couple, it's just basically taking the same signal and compressing it in stereo. If I take it out, then this goes back to its default settings where nothing is really happening over there. So that's just what the um, stereo couple button does. It lets you use this set of controls to set the settings for both channels um, by coupling it. Okay, and then it won't matter what you do on these controls for this side. Whatever you do over here becomes the master control for the whole unit. So if you're using the two sides of this unit separately, you'll wanna make sure that your stereo couple button is off so you can set separate settings for each side. So the last compressor I wanted to talk about is the one knob compressor. And this is a, found on a lot of these smaller analog consoles like the Behringer here. Uh, Mackie's, a couple other companies have done this where they add just a one knob compressor. And then it's also found on some more basic digital consoles where they just want to put all the features into a single knob. Now, the thing is that the one knob, what it does is it combines threshold, ratio, and makeup gain all into one knob. And by doing that, you just sort of go along the curve. Now, let's take four here and we'll turn it up to maybe about there. So we're kicking in a little bit. You can hear the compression happening. But the thing that's on the back part of that knob, so uh, um, up toward the, the end of the rotation, is the makeup gain. So you gotta be careful with that. If you crank that all the way up, now all of a sudden you can see that there's a ton of extra gain there. And the thing that might happen is you might inadvertently be thinking, ah, oh, I need more compression, I'll turn the knob up more you might add too much gain and create feedback. So just be careful with the one knob and understand how it works. And I think what we're gonna do here is show you a diagram of the one knob. So you can kind of take a look and see how the ratio changes, how the threshold changes, and how there's makeup gain there at the end. So there you go. That's how the one knob compressor works. Next, we're gonna take a look at gates. One of the things or the concepts in my head that help me understand gates is I think of a spring-loaded gate that you see like on a back fence or something that closes itself automatically when you come through it. An audio gate works like that um, and you set a strength. So sound with a certain strength can push that gate open and get through, but weaker sound that isn't up to that threshold or doesn't have that much strength can't open the gate like a small child. It can't get through the gate and therefore you don't hear it. Let's take a look, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so here's the gate setting. And again, we're gonna set a threshold. And you see, as I bring it up here, it's gonna show the threshold based on the DB. Uh, right now we're at, eh, eh. Oh, you can kind of hear it cutting in and out. So let's move it up to like 60. 
Now you can see that the threshold here is shown on our input bar. And no signal that is below 60 uh, will make it through. So anything that has to, everything has to be louder or stronger than 60 to get through the gate. And then it'll just shut everything off. All the way down to zero, as you can see here on the output. So there are, it's kind of tricky sometimes to set a gate. Sometimes, especially with people who are speaking, weird artifacts will get through. If I breathe too heavily, And if we set our gate to, or our, our, our gate threshold too aggressively, now only parts of what I'm saying are getting through because our threshold is too high. If we set our threshold a little lower, that's better. It can be tricky to set a threshold for somebody on a gate. In general, I don't use gates a lot for spoken word or vocals uh, or because it's just too tricky. If that person gets really soft for some reason, then you're going to have trouble with the gate kicking in wrong. And then you're trying to find it and adjust it. And gates are used a lot more for effect. Um, they're used a lot on drums for example, to close that mic down and then only like the really loud snap of the drumstick gets through or something. So they're available, um, but you got to be careful with them because you can make a real mess with a gate um, if it's not set properly. Okay, so now we're looking at the gate on the front of the DBX. And you'll notice something here with this gate. This also says expander. Well, what's the difference? Well, a real gate ha doesn't have um, a ratio. It's like the ratio is um, infinity, kind of like on the compressor, all right? So when there's no signal, you're gonna get zero noise, no noise at all. And an expander does the opposite of a compressor where it brings the softer noises down in volume and so what happens is that they still come through, but they're not so obnoxiously loud. And it really helps things sound more natural, especially for voice applications, um, when you can get sort of that softening of something that's not above the threshold. So let's start here by setting our threshold. Now you can see the setting there. When we're not talking, red means the gate is closed. And when we are talking, Green means that signal is coming through. Now, right now, our ratio is a one to one, so we're not actually gating. So let's engage a ratio. Okay, so now we set it to two to one. And now you can notice that when I'm not talking, there's no background noise at all. But let's crank this ratio all the way up to here. And that just it just seems a little odd for voice. It might be good for, you know, quick attack for some sort of instrument, drums or something. So and then we're going to turn the ratio down a little bit here. And we can get it to a point where it sounds pretty natural. The gate doesn't sound obnoxious. But at the same time, when we're not talking, background noise from our room isn't coming through. Or other noises or instruments on our in our mix that might be near to the thing we're gating aren't bleeding through on the gate. So that channel is closed off. So those are the settings for the expander gate on the DBX. So I hope that helps you with setting up your gate and your compressor. Um, and as you can tell, it's easy to set them badly. And Again, my philosophy is less processing is sometimes better, although there are times when you'll need heavy processing for certain situations or certain instruments. Thanks for watching.
help you to visual, visualize, visualize. And then the words, the words are having trouble today.